Hi everyone, welcome to Type Talks. And so Holly, would you like to tell us a bit about you? I'm Holly, uh, I'm 52 and I am just very interested in personality and so I just um, enjoy having conversations about it. So I wanted to join in. Awesome, <laughs> glad to have you Holly. And Christian? Uh, I'm Christian. Um, I um, live in SoCal and I uh, currently am uh, doing independent research on um, uh, state formation and transitions from, from uh, state formation into either democracy or authoritarianism. Fancy stuff. <laughs> and Spacey? I'm Spacey. I have a YouTube channel about MBTI and I type people, and I am a scholar of typology. You're very much a scholar of yeah. typology, Spacey. Mm -hmm. And Spacey has a YouTube channel that I'll link below, so check that out. And I'll have everyone's Twitters linked below as well. My name is Joyce, and I'm a certified MBTI practitioner, and I facilitate the instrument in organizations. And so without further ado, let's get to our topic of tonight. INJs versus INPs. And so my first question for everyone is, what are some differences you see between NJs versus NPs? As an NJ, like I naturally have a sense of direction and long-term focus. I tend to be a person who is not easily distracted or I do not appreciate distractions sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, I tend to like to tie loose ends and I tend to like conceptually want to flesh it out, flesh out ideas to its end. So I tend to spend like a long time with figuring out how I perceive something all the way to its end. And, and so I'm kind of patient when it comes to fully fleshing out ideas. Yeah, the, those are a few points to start it off. What's everyone else's experiences? <laughs> Or we could definitely say by contrast that NPs usually are like really scattered. They don't have really much direction in life. Usually it takes them a long time to figure out what they want to do, or they just keep changing what they want to do. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I guess they usually just spitball an idea like really quickly and then let it kind of build up momentum and keep uh, modifying it as it, as it improves. Yeah. Um, as uh, an NP, INP myself, um, obviously I'd have to agree. Um, just within my own life, um, I have gone from um, wanting to be um, uh, a Disney animator to uh, going to law school and wanting to be uh, an attorney to um, wanting to maybe go into organizational development to <laughs> wanting to uh, go into academia, which I've pretty much settled on academia, but I have then also now recently changed which uh, area of study I'd like to focus on. So initially it was political science, but now I'm thinking maybe maybe sociology or um, uh, or even history. So um, so as you can see, a lot of uh, a lot of changing going on um, for me um, as I've developed myself and my identity and as I've sort of figured out what's important to me and what I'm passionate about, like um, my my interests and what I'd like to do for a career has changed. So it's kind of like what Spacey is saying, you just kind of spit all things and you kind of take it as it happens. Um, and what's funny is I actually had sort of like a long-term plan for, um, um, or I guess as long-term as it can be for, for an IMP, plan to be an attorney, but that like just completely and totally changed um, after I graduated from law school and had sort of an existential crisis um, as INPs tend to have. <laughs> so, um, and um, I, I think uh, obviously the biggest difference between NJs um, or at least INJs and I, um, INPs is the, our dominant function, what we lead with. Um, INPs prefer to lead with an introverted judging function. So that's going to be kind of like our North Star. We're going to um, uh, kind of accord our behavior to whatever it, um, whatever principles or values we hold. 
Um, so we're not, um, yeah, so it's, 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 we're more evaluating information uh, and judging it um, constantly. That's kind of how we lead our life as opposed to just perceiving information and just kind of um, ruminating on the ideas and then kind of like having like a, um, a, a projection forward into the future. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest difference too, obviously, is our, our, our lead functions are, are, are different. Yeah, I'm basically constantly coming to conclusions about things, right. even even things that are like totally small things that are totally relevant. Just always conclusions being made. Yep, very quickly, <laughs> yeah. oftentimes. I think, especially for INPs, because our SI um, like concretizes like certain um, uh, uh, ideas or perceptions very quickly. That, very quickly and so then that feeds into our ti so like our or not our ti but our, our ji so our fi and ti can pretty much instantly refer back to these si stored ideals or principles um and just in, so we can immediately make a, a a quick judgment yeah that's really fascinating and so christian you mentioned existential crisis <laughs> so i was wondering like is this like existential crisis identity crisis come from not knowing exactly what you want to do in life um i think that's part of it yeah uh, because because we don't have like very long-term um goals uh that we kind of work towards like our our identities um are kind of evolving as we go along through life and as we kind of as our SI kind of, as our any and SI like perceives and like kind of stores information. Um, and then we kind of slowly update that in, in our JI um, systems. So, um, so it takes some time, but when it happens though, it can really, especially if it's something like foundational, it can really shake us. So it's definitely, um, it's definitely like that, yeah. I guess for me, it goes a little deeper than that. Maybe I'll think about how to explain it later, but um, it's, I feel like we're like nagged by like this, we're plagued by this sense of doubt and like uncertainty mm -hmm. all the time. And that's a big part of it too. Yeah. And it, I, I feel like like the INTJs, at least that I've known, um, I didn't get that from them. Like they were, that they were like high anxiety, like worrying about shit. They seem much more calm and like certain about things. Yes. I and FJs, however, I've at least had conversations with a couple of them about similar existential uh, crises to, to the, the kind that I may have had. Yeah, I, I think um, um, I would agree with what you're saying, Spacey. There, like there is, there's always, I think it's, for us, maybe specifically, it's the NE. There's always the what if possibility kind of thing, perhaps, um, that's kind of nagging in the back of your mind. Um, I think that's, uh, you know, and then until you like address it or until, he, until it starts fully forming and it becomes real, like then, you know, um, it's, it's still kind of in your subconscious, but then when it happens, when it hits, then it's like, it's pretty hard. I, I think that's what happened with me like recently with, you know, with figuring out like, okay, like I know I want to go into academia, but like what specific subject I was fairly certain on political science, but there was, I think there was always something nagging at me. Like what if possibility, like what if I choose the wrong thing or what if I'm not happy with it? You know, there's at least, and this is my personal experience. So there's something like, that's like, it's that what if possibility. Um, and so that's mm -hmm. what kind of led me like, Oh God, like maybe I, you know, maybe my, J.I. was telling me this whole time, this kind of little nagging voice in the back of my head was telling me this whole time that this is actually not what I wanted. And so then I was like, but I've spent all these years kind of like orienting kind of my my life around doing research, potentially doing research in that area. So it's, yeah, so I've now had to like recalibrate. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, I, I like that there's that kind of nagging thing in the back of your mind. I feel like I've always had direction, just mm. inherently. Even when I was a child, I had, I guess you could say dreams or fantasies about what I wanted to do when I got older. That's kind of where I live <laughs> all the time. And it just kind of gets more honed and honed, narrowed mm. down and more focused over, over the years. 
Mm. But it does, but it does, there was a time period in my thirties where I got, I did have a bit of a crisis because um, I, I wasn't sure which direction to take. And, mm. um, and INFP actually helped me out with that. She said, well, what she does is, and she is very successful. It works for her. She um, would just pick the best thing in the moment that she could find that, and like make the best, let's say there's three cho choices. She would pick the one that was the best of the three, even if none of them was really awesome. And then from that vantage point, she would do that for a while. And then from there, she would go to the next best and then the next best and kind of hop skip until eventually she was doing her passion. And that really worked for me, too. Um, but, yeah, it, it's different. The INFP does it differently than the INTJ, obviously. But, mm -hmm. but, yeah, I've always felt a everything you said, Joyce, I 100 percent totally resonate with all of that. Well, I guess when you're in a chaotic situation, you kind of want to adopt perceiver strategies, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I found perceivers are helpful for me. They help me be more analytical a lot of times, which is good. Not make such quick decisions. I'm always thinking decades ahead and they're like, well, just what about right now? <laughs> just think about what's good now and just go with that. You don't have to know. 20 years from now, what you're, what you're going to do. Yeah. Like NI has a really long stretch view, a, a way that I really like NI being put is like by Susan Storm from psychology junkie. And she says, it's like how the last domino will fall. So you're, you're looking at a line of dominoes, but NI will, will NJs like want to figure out how the last domino will fall. So it's like, figuring out an idea so you can figure out the end state of that idea. And yeah. I was just say definitely. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Very focused on that ending where you're going to end up because you, for me, you want, there's something you really want. So everything you're doing is trying to get you to that point. And I guess, you know, the crisis is, is not knowing what you want, but usually I think I pretty much usually know what I want. And so I just want to make sure that's going to happen. Okay, so, so that would be the difference between the INFJ and the INTJ. <laughs> so, oh. like, you're looking at the end state of things to figure out, like, your FI want and how it fits into that and how to, like, TE achieve that. For me, it's more of a, like, I, I'm looking at, like, the end state of social outcomes because mm. I want people to get along well. And I, I get distressed when there's, when people don't get along well. And so it's more of, not not my own wants but it's like a it's it's a wanting interpersonal cohesion and like figuring out how that plays into the long term so it, it it's it's less about what you described and <laughs> more about that <laughs> hmm. that's interesting yeah it makes sense yeah interesting and so I remember Spacey called NE like an active process of ideation. And so Spacey, could you go a little bit into that and how you see it as like a compulsion, like any? Um, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a possibility generator. So it's like literally any single thing that you focus on or think about uh, immediately becomes like a constellation of things uh, that, that are like either qualities about it or possibilities of how they might impact something in the future or what may happen to them in the future. Or it, it it's, it's literally, there's a whole mess of things. And that's what any does. It just compulsively starts generating like corollary details and, and possibilities in relation to things. Cool. How about Holly and Christian? Like what is your experience in contrast to what Spacey said? Well, I mean, like, I, I mean, I have any in the same slot as Spacey, so I would, I would agree visually, conceptually. I think of um, um, NE as a like a like a neural network, right? So it's like, you know, you have your nodes, and then, um, and then you have like connections to all of these other separate nodes, and they they kind of all connect. They're all connected in some way. Um, even though like the lines might be crossing and they might be really, really messy. But, um, and so uh, that's how I kind of think of, of, um, of any is like a, just a, a neural network of, of different ideas. I guess to sum it up, I would say when someone asks me what I'm thinking, I can't really answer them because I'm thinking about like 50 different things that are all interrelated. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
Yeah, you have like 50 different tabs in your brain yeah, opened. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, so Holly, what are your thoughts on all of this? Well, as an INTJ, uh, NE is not my in my ego stack. So <clears throat> it's not really a default for me, but I do go into it and I do deliberately use it sometimes, but it's not anything like what you guys are describing. It's just very quick. Like I'll, <clears throat> I found myself in it occasionally if my mind just can wander, you know, um, but then I'll instantly pop back into NI. Uh, I just, I slip right back into NI all the time. Even when I, even when I'm being deliberate about any, and I can kind of force myself or not force myself, but sort of guide my brain into these other thoughts, but it's nothing like what you guys described because it's, it's very deliberate. Uh, And then again, I can't do it for very long. Right. That's fascinating. And so Holly, I, I realized uh, I want to circle back to when we were talking about the dominoes and the end domino. So I guess what I was trying to say back then is that for me, it's kind of like a larger system. So I'm, when, I, when I'm projecting the end of a domino, I'm trying to figure out how it fits in terms of a larger system, whether it's a larger social system or a, even just like societal, cultural or so, but it's in a way that is not to do with me, if that makes sense. So that's how it feels like. It feels like for me that it doesn't have to do with me and that I'm trying to figure out how it has to do with other people. Are or you, that you're looking <clears throat> looking upon a framework, like you're looking down, like looking down on it from a omniscient perspective, sort of? Yeah, it feels like a bird's eye view. I yeah. feel that way too. I, I think maybe ours is just different obviously and what drives it for me, I'm driven by my own feelings and values and you're driven by the cultural or the, the group. Yeah, that's, that's true. But also what it feels like what drives it is like a, it's, it feels like TI. So it feels like this impersonal analysis that like Spacey kind of describes, but it's like, it's, 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 I don't know. So like, I don't know how it feels like to, to 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 let my feelings and values drive me towards anything. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't know what that means. That like well, yeah, it's, it's I know what's best for you. It's it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> and there's and it's all logical and you just want everyone to be happy, but you know best. This oh. that's INFJ to me. I mean, <laughs> that sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> Does that sound like what you're experiencing? What I don't saying? know how to describe how I'm experiencing things. <laughs> this is sort of, well, I can say like, that for me, um, I mean, I have a vision. I have a very visual representation of it. For me, if you're interested in that, then it's probably a little different to you. But <clears throat> it's kind of this amorphous structure in my mind. So. I have a general sense of the framework or skeleton or a scaffolding or some kind of a structure that um, doesn't have all the pieces filled into it, but it, it's the entire scope of whatever it is that I'm going towards, like my goal or my lifelong journey or whatever it is. And then, because um, it, it's, I have that for all the different goals and large and small, I'll have the framework in place first. And then once I feel comfortable with that scope, and it encompasses everything I care about, then I will start picking one area of that and diving into the details and filling those in, researching it, whatever I need to do to make it happen. But I have to hone in on one area of it because it's pretty overwhelming and large sometimes. So I'll tackle one area first and then I'll tackle another. And sort of that's how I approach it. I don't know if that really answers your question. Interesting. That's some TI. There's a lot of TE going on there. <laughs> There's a lot of yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do find that INFJs are surprisingly cold and and detached inwardly when, mm-hmm. when they don't seem that way. And INTJs are actually often, at least as they get older, like very warm and like yeah sensitive and stuff. It's yeah. I I I've I've seen it described um, 
on Twitter, on type Twitter somewhere. And I agree that like, um, you know, NJ's, um, um, or at least, um, yeah, I guess NTJs are like very cold on the outside, but actually warm on the inside. And it's like the reverse for, for NFJs because of the TI. Mm. Um, so, and, and I would, I would agree with that. I actually, I think that's why, like, um, like if you poke NTJs and NTJs too enough, like, um, they get, especially if it's like personal to them, if it's like attacking their FI in some way, like they get extremely, extremely defensive. And I think they, I think that's because they recognize that their FI is so sensitive because of how low in their stack it is that they put on like, uh, they surround it with like uh, just almost uh, an impenetrable barricade. Mm. They have to like, they have to appear strong outwardly. So that way you don't get to their, their weaker inner core. <laughs> so, well, the um, way it works, the way I've experienced it is um, I didn't really experience emotions that much when I was younger, mm. like say elementary school. I mean, I, I'm sure I did. Obviously we all do, but right. I wasn't that aware of paying attention. I wasn't like, man, I'm sad today, you know? Right. Um, but in my twenties, I got to be pretty conscious. I, I started feeling very strongly, you know, I was very in tune with my emotions and to be, they were overwhelming sometimes. And I had to like get a handle on that because that does not, it's not fun. I, I know that INFPs sometimes can enjoy that intensity of emotion, but I did not, it was painful. So I, um, I would try to figure out ways to guide things to be as happy as possible so that I didn't have to deal with negative feelings. And, you know, when I was younger, um, people thought I was too intense or too serious. Uh, and so I kind of had to learn, okay, what am I going to do here? I can't interact with people like this. It's not working. So I, I took a job waiting tables to learn how to use FE. I didn't call it FE. I just called it social skills, basically. And that really helped a lot with my, because then I didn't have these negative experiences with people all the time that were causing me to feel bad because people would think bad things like she's too intense. And that's a criticism, you know, because you're, you're, you're criticizing me at my core, who I am, you know, um, they would say, chill out or you're, you know, I can't even think now anymore, but it was hurtful. And also misunderstandings. I would just be innocently maybe trying to help someone with an idea and they would take it as if I'm trying to control them or trying to tell them what to do or being a know-it-all or whatever. And that would kind of crush me because I was really had good intentions. So I just had to really learn to change who I am around people in many instances. Interesting, Holly. So would you say it's like offering your TE help and then people? Yes. Yeah. I deliberately, I deliberately realized and I think I might have started this with Myers Briggs about back in 2005. That might be when I started doing this deliberately. I realized I could connect very comfortably using TE. So I thought, well, I'll just do that whenever I want to make a conversation. I'll just try to bring up a topic that has to do with gardening or something that you can discuss T, you know, in a TE kind of way. And that, and that really helped me connect with a lot more people. Rather oh, than yeah. trying to talk about, you know, people, other people's, I, I couldn't really get it, get into the conversation with SE kind of conversations that really didn't sustain. <laughs> I would get bored. Um, TI, I couldn't sustain that. FI and TE are my best ways of interacting with people. Or <laughs> FE, really. And that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's really fascinating. So I was, I was wondering, Holly, when you were talking about like people taking you the wrong way, I was wondering if that was like TE, like you offering TE assistance and people taking it like it was too controlling. Yeah. yeah. No one ever called it controlling until I got older and I was in significant intimate relationships. But when it was just friendship, social setting, they would say it was um, like maybe rude. <laughs> to offer advice, you know, or um, maybe kind of boring, or it just wasn't, it just wasn't really what people wanted to talk about. TE, I guess, isn't always very interesting to a lot of people. 
unless they're also a TE user. I think I know what she's talking about. I don't, it's probably not just the TE, but it's also part of just like being an introvert who gets like really interested in, yeah. and involved in things to like a really significant degree where like she's really into it or like droning on for so long that it, people are just like, what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 A part of like, I guess being into, into the topics that you like and wanting to talk about the topics that you interest you is like an introvert thing. Introverts are more interested in the subject areas that they're interested in and they want to talk more about that, but extroverts are more fluid with conversational topics, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so that's a good distinction. Um, yeah. So Holly, you mentioned this really great point about how NI narrows down or you talked about narrowing down. And yeah, like, so NI is known as being convergent and NE is known as being divergent by AJ Drenth. And so that narrowing down was really interesting. I was wondering on the converse, like NE is more expansive, you know, as Sp Spacey was describing so well and, and Christian too. And it was like about everything connects to everything. And then you have this like long, like this mind map of ideas, of many ideas connected to each other. So Sp Spacey, you mentioned this really great idea about NE and how it's like about post prospecting it's about mm -hmm. like you don't you it doesn't know what it's looking for could, right. you, could you go into that well i mean it really is just like prospecting like digging for gold because like you don't you don't know if you're gonna find anything and and by that point in your life you may fully expect that you probably won't find anything but you know there's a possibility that you could find something in there um and and so you can't resist that that's that's what it's about it's leaving no stone unturned it's like an in, insatiable curiosity. Yes, insatiable. <laughs> yeah. And so, Spacey, you also mentioned this point before with me where NE is more experiential. So you need to experience something to know if you're interested in it. So mm -hmm. could you go a little bit into that? Well, it may be, it's probably part of part of the SI too. It's, it's like, I don't, I, yeah, I have to I have to see something or taste it or or smell it or whatever to know if I actually like it because I can have ideas about stuff, but if I ha if I don't have a lot of experience with it, I know really that I am just it's all just uh, what sort of looking? speculation, pointless speculation. Um, so oftentimes, yeah, I'll be in a situation where like I'm eating this particular dish at a particular time, and my SI will just be like. Mm. Um, but then I could eat the same thing again, like two weeks later when like circumstances are different and I won't get, I won't get that same reaction. Like I won't be like, ah, oh, I like this. Um, and so it, it becomes, at least for me, really difficult to determine what I like, but then I may be reaching into like TI or FI or something else now. Yeah, that's really, really well put, Spacey. My ENFP friend, what she says is that like, she doesn't really know if she likes a guy until or something so there needs to be that experience that confirms how she feels about something and she's the same way about like career paths too it's like she doesn't really know what major she wants to take unless she's in the program and then she she's then like she gets the right. reaction where she then realizes that 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 is so interesting so it's, it becomes this thing where we spend all this time right thinking about what we're going to do and then we haven't even done it yet. And so it's like, it doesn't even matter all that thinking we did or whatever, it just falls apart because now that we've experienced it, everything has changed. It's like. <laughs> Interesting. Do you have something to add, Holly? <laughs> I just think that's fascinating. I didn't realize that they, that any doctor like that. That's. That would be hard. I would I would think that might be kind of difficult. Well, it's really bad for any DOMs because Yeah. Like like some ENTPs or whatever, they can be like dead set on something one day and the next day they have completely changed their mind. And you're like, wow, what happened to that logic? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's it's why ENFPs they tend to jump into relationships because they're like, you know, this could turn out well, you know. The any is like this could be a good possibility and then they'll jump into it because they need to experience how it's like with that person actually to to know if it's a good fit for enfps um and i noticed that like they tend to to say yes to 
to to dating people more ENFPs because they need to actually experience it to judge it. NPs need to go through something to know if it's right for them. Whereas NJs, they kind of know even before trying it. So NJs have a sense of how how it'll go and how like what it will mean like before trying it. I've always seen myself as, I mean, I don't really feel this way, but you could call me a goody two shoes because I always could see why I wouldn't want to do something. Everybody else was just going wild and doing things like in school and college and high school. And I would just be like, that is so stupid. Why are you doing that? This is going to come, this is going to lead to this problem that you're going to have to deal with later. (sighs) And now I'm understanding why, you know, they can't really judge it until they experience it. But for me, it's so obvious the path is not going to lead to a good place. (laughs) Yeah. That that was a struggle for me because my friends would be like, come on, you know, do want me to do stuff that I could see was bad. I wasn't going to turn out well. So I would always be like the one that just kind of ended up not going along with them or just um, kind of being a little bit of a damper, but I ended up having friends that were probably also kind of nerdy and goody two shoes. So it worked out okay. (laughs) sometimes, But Anyway. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I have my trust me. Sometimes I have my like ni demonstrative whispering in my ear, and it's going like this isn't going to go well, Steve. <laughs> like you know what you should do, Steve. Yeah. And I I, I just ignore it because ni is like now nah, it'll be different. Yeah, I think for INPs, so we we can have like a um, an ideal built up in our minds of like how we perceive or imagine things to be. Um, and so I think because we're acutely aware of the fact that oftentimes like our ideal from past SI experience, because our ideals don't always match up with the reality, I think we have to like experience it because our imagined uh, realities can seem so real to us. Um, and also like if we don't engage in, in our extroverted judging function, we're not going to like actually go out into the world and experience things. We're, we're content with just living in our imaginary world. Um, And so I think there's also, at least for me in particular, there's sometimes like a protection of my, my ideal world or my imaginary world. So um, where I know from past SI experience that like there could, there's a potential for disappointment uh, between like what I imagine things to be and how they actually are. And so like, I don't want like my ideal to be contaminated by reality, by like a TE reality. Um, So like I might be unhealthy, like that's, those are unhealthy things, but like I, I've in the past, I've kind of just stuck in my own of just not doing things because I'm afraid, you know? Um, and I think, um, yeah. And I, I'm different. Also, you mentioned the ENFPs are, I, I think because of their NE, they're more excited about the possibility. Um, and so they'll say yes to relationships more. Like I'm a lot more cautious as an INFP. Um, but I will be, be more, I will have the more like naive NE, like, oh, you know, anything could happen type thing, you know, <laughs> like, and maybe this, be- I think it's different because NI, like you said, is convergent and it's focused on narrowing down. Um, I think NI users can, in, especially in relationships, they can kind of see like, oh, not even just from past data, but just kind of like, they have just a sense of like, oh, I, this can go bad. Um, whereas like with SI, like we have the past data, but also like our NE sees multiple possibilities. And sometimes we just choose to see like the idealistic outcome. So we'll just go with that because like, there's a chance that it could be different. So, um, we're just like, well, we'll just go in and just see how it goes. Um, but, um, sometimes that ends up hurting us, but we do have to, I have to experience things. I learned, I've, I've always been somebody who I have, I learned the hard way. Um, so that's, that's fascinating, Christian, you mentioned how you see all these possibilities and that can cause like indecision in Mm. NPs. So Mm. while the kryptonite of an INFJ and an INTJ might be an over certainty in how they think something will head like a vision for how things will go, like for the NPs, it might be an indecision that might Mm -hmm. plague them. Definitely. I was thinking about something else. Oh yeah, I definitely learned the hard way too. Like I sometimes I feel like I literally I have to make every possible mistake. Like at least once. 
And then finally, I'll get to a point where like, I don't even have to think about it and I'll avoid all basic errors. And then that that's the sweet spot. Like it's... My best friend's ENFP. And she has said before mm -hmm. that she kind of needs judgers because it's so hard for her to make a decision. She just gets paralyzed. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, she'll be like, oh, it's a relief for someone else to just help her decide. I've had that, I had that decision or I've had that issue before. I'm fairly certain um, my mom is an ESTJ or some sort of STJ. And I remember like I was having a crisis, of course, <laughs> and I could not make a decision about something. And I was, I was like, just like having obsessive rumination. Um, and I was just like, oh my God, you know, like, I don't know what to do. And I would just like constantly talk to my mom about it, um, just in like distress. Um, and so my mom just, I think, got tired of it. And she was just like, look, just stop and just make a decision and live with it and accept the consequences, okay? Like, just make a decision, you know? <laughs> like, she was just kind of like snap out of it. Like, you need to just just make a decision and, and just, um, yeah, just do it. And so uh, sometimes I think we need, especially if we're like spiraling out of control, um, I think we need, us NPs need judges to just snap us out of it sometimes. Yeah, because then you'll get some perspective. You'll basically it'll just give you new information once you do something. Right. Then you'll have okay. Now I have the information from that new experience. Right. That I can make my decision for the next time, or the next. Decision. Yeah, yeah. That's often the problem is we're just we're too afraid to get the the extra information that we need. Or mm -hmm. the the fear of making the wrong decision will keep us from ever doing anything at our yes. worst. You know. Yes, that is uh, that is absolutely been my issue my entire life. There's this crippling anxiety of making the wrong decision. But then you realize that you could always have made a better decision in retrospect. So. Right. <laughs> so it's futile. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Obviously, for me, it's easy because I'm a J, a TJ at that. Um, yeah. I just see decisions as temporary. You know, it's just mm, something right. that now I'll adjust. It's, I don't know if any of you are into programming, but there's this thing called, there's two methods of programming. One's called the waterfall and one's called the iterative or agile method. Waterfall mm. is where you sort of plan everything out ahead of time and then you just follow it and you're sort of married to this plan. And if something goes wrong, too bad, you know, you, you're, you're locked into it. But the agile method is where you just, you jump in, you do something and then you, assess it like you'll you'll go for a weekend and you'll assess where you are and you'll, you'll change course and you just keep doing that until you get to the end and by the end it's you've adapted all the way along until you've got something that's really really a good product but i kind of do that with everything mm -hmm. not just you know work related i you know things but that's kind of how i see the difference between that j and, and p mm -hmm. So which one is which one? Waterfall and Agile is which one is J and which one's P? I would say the waterfall is more the P. You're, you you mm -hmm. want to just have it all figured out before you right. before you pull the trigger. Yeah. Right. Okay, we'll just go ahead and try something. But on the flip side of that, we have to be careful that we don't make we don't jump too soon. And as I've gotten older, I've gotten pretty good at this, letting my TI work on it before I just jump into something. You know, don't just like make too many snap decisions like think about it for a while and then and then go for it. Yeah, my my friends at Practical Typing would also attribute that to the NISE axis versus the SI NE axis. Mm -hmm. So they use this example mm -hmm. of a of a bookcase organizing books. So basically mm -hmm. they say that the NE SI user will want to plan out a way to organize the books before organizing the books. So SI kind of needs to figure out all of the steps before putting the books in. And is much more passive. And then obviously, so is so is SI. So like, there's definitely more of like a, let's plan things ahead first. Um, and then, um, and then do something. And it's funny, because like, as you know, my mom being an ESTJ, she is more about like the doing stuff, um, even though she has SI, but she's more quick to do stuff. But when she's in a grip state, she will like obsessively ruminate over 
possibilities because her NE is now higher in her function stack. And so she gets paralyzed with doing stuff. Um, so it's, it's, it's really interesting to see how that flip happens. That actually leads right into a, th a thought that I just had about, I feel like us like IPs at least or perceivers in general, like we have, we have these ideas that never get challenged. <laughs> they never, they never get, they never get tested. Right. And, and perhaps they can't be tested. Um, and so I think the judges are actually way less likely to believe things that aren't true because they're constantly testing what they believe in real yes. time. Um, yes. I, that's such a, that's actually a really great insight. I think in that respect, judges are much more empirical and scientific than, than P's and IP's. I think, mm -hmm were more, um, you know, philosophical um, in that sense. Yeah. That actually fits right in with the fact that INTJs and INFJs can sort of predict how things are going to turn out, too. Mm, yeah. That is so cool. <laughs> no, it's a great idea, because it's like their, their stuff is much more backed by, like, empirical data than ours is. <laughs> um, so this is kind of how it is. But that yeah. makes it also interesting to talk to, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very true. We do have crazy ideas, you know? <laughs> it, gives us it gives us, I feel like it gives us. Well, if we have a good enough idea and somebody else comes up with a good way to test for it. Yes. Then, then good things happen. Right. So I think that, I think we're like the idea generators and then we can have the J's doing the kind of scientific method and, and testing to see if, if it actually bears out in, in reality. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so the J's are like the finishers and the perceivers are they, they start the ideas. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you've got like the INTPs doing theoretical physics and they're like, based on my calculations with this ridiculous abstract algebra that nobody can understand, <laughs> there should be a particle about this size when you smash these other particles together. Now let's <laughs> fire up the large hadron collider. You know? like, yeah. yeah. No, it's that's um, that's true. And INFPs are out in ethics and metaphysical land talking about stuff that you can't really test. <laughs> they're just because they're too abstract. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I feel like that makes you guys great compasses. Mm. So you guys like mm. have a good idea. Like if you're an INFP, like the compass of the most ethical or metaphysical like way to orient yourself. And like, you know, Spacey, you know, the thoughts to, to align yourself with that make the most sense. And so it helps like judges even like reflect more. Cause um, I think IPs are the most reflective, self-reflective mm. type. Mm -hmm, very much. So you, yeah, that's something you add to the world. <laughs> mm, thank you. We, it's a good partnership, right? Definitely. Mm -hmm something funny to, to hold the whole like idea thing and and then like versus the judge or executing thing. So like another thing that I, <laughs> one of my like, you know, uh, career um, uh, possibilities was I was interested in going into a think tank. But what I, as I was doing more research into think tanks, what I was realizing is the, the scholars who were, and I was thinking of maybe like doing research work um, for, for think tanks for like political, politically oriented think tanks. What I noticed is that um, scholars who do research at think tanks, they take the ideas from academia, the theories from academia, and then they actually test it out in the real world. And that is not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to actually test it in the, in the real world. I wanted to come up with the theory. So like ac academia is very like P, even though it's not like, I mean, there's a lot of INTJs actually in academia, especially in the sciences, but but the it's P in the sense that like academia comes up with the theories and then these think tanks then in a J type way then test those theories. So I wanted to be on the theory end and not in the testing um, the the ideas in in a like um, the real world. So yeah. Anyways. Interesting. Yeah, when I engage with things, it's it's always keeping like the end in mind. And so mm. the end in mind involves the the steps to completion. And so that's another difference. Um, like judges tend to have a sense of completion. So with NJs, they want to complete their ideation. So what they'll do is they'll 
room, like they'll, I don't know, it's different than like NE brainstorming in, in my opinion, because it's no, like- Oh yeah, nothing's ever it, finished with us. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm sure you guys like will think of some ideas, but there is a compulsion towards like an end point. Like where if we're not like, um, if there's not structure for us in the brainstorming process, We'll just keep going and going and going, you know, and we won't stop. It's more like, like for me, I, I do get a lot of different ideas. I do think that I get, I experience NE, but what happens is I start feeling this, I don't want to say it's this, it's not anxiety, but I start feeling this. A compulsion, right? Like an urge perhaps. Yeah, a really strong urge to do something with it, to, to bring it into fruition. Mm. Um, and almost like if I don't do this, it's going to, you know, it won't, it'll lose its, its value to the world. It, it may be lost to the world. So it's like, I want to bring it out. That's mm. fascinating. Like when I'm having like, like, for example, in the space you're talking about quantum physics, um, me and my INFP friend, we actually love when we hang out, we love talking about, because he's an electrical engineer, but he's really fascinated with quantum physics and quantum mechanics. And we just love talking about that stuff. Um, and we don't necessarily care that it has some sort of uh, practical purpose or effect. We just, for the sheer enjoyment of the, of like conceptually how cool and crazy the possibility of something could be, we just like talking mm -hmm. about it. And we just kind of riff on that. And we don't have to talk about it in practical terms. Like, oh, like how would we apply, like, what would we, what would, what could we think of where we could apply these like particle physics into, or, and, and quantum mechanics into something like that would help society? Like we don't think about that at all. You know? I love having those theoretical conversations, philosophical ones, but yeah, I do tend to like, my brain starts going, well, how can we do that? How can right. We, <laughs> we don't yeah. care. Yeah. I feel like. Yeah. It gets into TE mode. It's like, how do I TE pragmatize this? Or right. even as a judger, you would want to like execute it. Happen? It's yeah, so cool. let's make it happen. <laughs> right. I find there are some um, NI DOMs who have like undeveloped SE too. So sometimes it's hard for them to put themselves into the world too. Um, I find that with, so when I, I, I also like to think about ideas too. But at some point when I'm with an any user and we're talking about ideas, I'll start to get like an itch where I'm like, well, so what's the point of this? So what's the point? Like, yeah. what are you getting at? <laughs> like, or like, but sometimes it's, there's no point. Like, to that the, is the point no, is that there's no point. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, I haven't noticed that getting that itch to like, what's the point for some reason, you know, I think I'm just so thankful that I can talk to them. Because so many people think I'm so weird. Well, mm -hmm. not now. Now that I'm older, I don't have any issues. Like, I don't have problems with getting along with people. But when I was younger, I was just so thankful for the PIPs because we could just talk and have a free flow of conversation. And it was just so nice. Mm -hmm. I, I never really thought, what's the point? You know? Oh, but I, I, I was really thinking. <laughs> oh, I feel that way too. Like I love you, IPs. It, it's it's almost, but it's it's like I sometimes I crave structure in the conversation. Yeah, so what I'm saying yeah. is like I'll I'll try to think like how does this fit into like how does this thought fit into a a, a, a structured way of seeing it so I can conceptual like because I want to like conceptually finish what you're starting so right. then I'm trying to figure out what your idea is so then I can right we, finish it <laughs> we, we we probably move on to a different idea before you can like before yeah. your own mind can place it in some sort of structure mm -hmm. yeah and i see you going like wait wait yes yeah, definitely. Right. Actually, yeah. right yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i have to bring them back to okay wait let's come back to what we were saying on this uh, how is this going to work out or how are we gonna yeah but uh, i had an interesting thought because holly you said something like about how it would be lost to the world if you didn't act on it. And it, it makes me think that NI has this tendency to like, when it has what seems like a decent idea, like it actually values it a lot. Oh yeah. And, and then it wants to materialize it. But for us, it's like ideas are like a jar of screws at my job. Like I grab a handful of them. <laughs> I, I drop them on the floor and I don't care, you know, like, right. It's like, it's like, you guys have this, like you, you have, I think Joyce, we've talked about this in another uh, chat before where like, you guys like have this, like my, this idea is like my baby, you know, and you guys 
where yeah, yeah like we generate so many different ideas that it's there's not as much of a personal attachment the only t- the only time that i get that way is if like my si concretizes a particular idea like if i'm doing like research on something and my si is like really bought into a theory that i've developed and i've put like a lot of time and effort and research into it um so i think that's like since it's introverted perceiving like and i can seem like that so only then i will be attached to it but if the idea has not into entered into si um into an si stage i i don't it doesn't it's like whatever you know i'll think of a new one for intjs at least it's driven i know it's third in our stack but fi really drives i mean i have my value i just i decide i figured out my value system when i was a teenager and i was like okay this is these are my Mm. values this is how I'm going to live my, how I'm going to live my life. And so everything that I do has to fall within that. And, and that makes everything I do very important to me because it's my values that are so strong. Right. You know, it's so interesting. You, I've seen so many INTJs on type Twitter talk about like their FI being very strong. Mm-hmm. Um, and I find that so fascinating. Yeah. I mean, it makes Maybe, sense to me. I mean, I I know two or three other I know three other INTJs here in my community, and they're all pretty similar to me. Like very much into the environment or vegetarianism or just things like that. Very right. based on their values. But um, I lost it. I was gonna I had a point, but I forgot. Well, the problem is a lot of INTJs are really bitter, and <laughs> because because everybody was mean to them. And now, and now they're disconnected from their emotions, and they don't want to feel anything. Oh, Isn't no. that sad? I feel emotions all day long. I know. <laughs> I had to learn how to accept them and let them kind of flow in, and then flow right over and keep on going. Just have mm. to let it, let it in, and let it back out. <laughs> Allow. Yeah, sounds like a spiritual meditative practice. That's yeah. that's great. In the moment, it, just as it happens, just let it. Well, if I was all about permeability, I've noticed, but sometimes people like they're permeable, like they let it in, but then they don't let it back out <laughs> and then it festers. Yeah. But, that's unhealthy. If I, yeah, I think INFPs definitely feel, uh, experience that a lot. Um, it's, it, it feels, I, I again, I love the way cognitive de- uh, type.com describes the permeability. It feels extremely invasive. Like it's almost as though like, uh, like it, the way it sounds like to me is like when an uh, organ, when you have an organ transplant and your body's like rejecting it, like that's how like really bad negative emotions can feel from like other people. Like if, uh, cause our, I think our FI as INFPs are, is highly permeable. Interesting. Spacey, I'm still thinking about your screw metaphor where your ideas are like you <laughs> like grabbing screws and yeah. throwing it on the floor. Yeah. And I was it made me think about how like NE, it abandons ideas when it loses interest in them. So mm-hmm. it's like it was fun to play around with this idea. Uh, now I'm losing interest because there's right. like, lots of angles to explore. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like you've gotten the gist of it and now it's like hot potato, yeah. leave it on the floor. <laughs> yes. That's, I think that's really interesting is like, I've noticed that like with NPs, we, once we get the gist of something, then we act like we know everything about it. And then, so then we extrapolate that onto everything else. (laughs) Well, we don't like the diminishing returns of, of learning more about it than, well, you know, the gist. Like, right, right, <laughs> right, uh, right. Especially if you're not that interested in it, and, or if your SI doesn't like kind of catch on to something that really makes you want to like go more in detail. Holly, your thoughts? I don't have too many thoughts on that other than just interacting with INFPs. Um, I've had quite a few in my life, close, close INFPs. And interestingly, I've had one who would get really defensive with my TE. Hmm. Like they would take, they would think that this is the one who I said would think I'm trying to control them. Mm. And I definitely was not trying to control them. Um, yeah. it, it almost like if I shared an opinion about, Hey, you could do this or you could do that. That was very controlling feeling and mm-hmm. to where people get upset. And I, I would just be like, I'm really sorry. You know? So I feel like I can't say my TE ideas sometimes, but then the other INFP I was married to, 
she constantly praised my tea and loved it. And I, 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 I mean, she probably built my my head up really big or something, you know, because of that. <laughs> she, I think she liked using maybe that to her. She, she uh, is a, a national education reform expert. And so she's very advanced in her career and very um, confident in herself. Mm -hmm. So I think that she probably just was thinking of the benefits of that and how right. she could be a team together. It wasn't like a, a she wasn't defensive or insecure about it. I get a right. nagging feeling though that she was literally just saying like, I don't like, I don't want to do anything about it. I don't like that you're giving me suggestions. I don't like that. So I'm going to use the word controlling. Okay. You know? Yeah. I could see yeah. That. I, I also think it depends on like the INFP's experience with TE. So like my mom being an STJ, having high stack yeah. TE, um, I'm extremely sensitive to TE. Um, so like I've been getting much better at it, but like it's just when you're growing up and you're extremely sensitive, um, TE can seem, it can seem extremely abrasive and controlling. Um, and I did feel that way. I felt like sometimes my mom was controlling me. And she was, and she would get very upset because she'd be like, "I'm just offering a suggestion," but I would, but I'd be like, "Your suggestions, the way you phrase them, sound like you're not suggesting it." So I, I think it depends on the INFP's experience with TE. Right. So like, if it, if they don't have, if they've never had a, a TE user, um, it, um, in their life, then I think it's the they look at TE as one more of admiration, um, whereas for me it was it was different. Yeah, that totally fits because the the person I'm talking about who gets so upset, her parents were both very controlling parents. I mean, mm. even when she told me, I'm like, oh my gosh, they were controlling, you know. Okay. So she definitely has a negative history with that. Well, that makes sense. Well, sometimes people will say they're just making a suggestion too, but they're not. Yeah. Right. I, I don't know. You know. Yeah. Yeah. In that case, they were really trying to control her. Yeah. That's a good point, Christian. It depends on what the INFP has concretized, like you say, like to say. <laughs> yep, my favorite word. <laughs> my favorite word. Yeah. With NE, as it's generating ideas, it gets more excited and more energetic, or like when it's like thinking about ideas. And you'll you'll see them like perk up when they're like discussing ideas. Like sometimes they'll talk a little faster, or they're like, I don't know, you'll you'll you'll, you'll hear this momentum building. Oh <laughs> levitating. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute. I love I, wa I love watching Annie get excited. <laughs> it's I feel like we're all about momentum. Like we we accelerate and then we decelerate and we like sit dead still for like six months and then we go <laughs> and then I don't know. It's like either you know like a, a it was like Newton's first law of motion or whatever. You know, an object at rest tends to stay at rest. Object yep. in motion tends to stay in motion. So yeah, very true. Yeah. Whereas I feel like for NI users, when they get more and more into an idea, they get more calm or settled into that idea. Like it makes more sense, but it's like reaching this almost tran tranquility with that idea. So it's almost different in the way that you see these types engage with ideas. Yeah. yeah. Very good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As like NE users get more excited about, about, about their ideas, they can become more frantic and kind of like mm. a like you'll 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 feel the rising of energy whereas like for nj's the more that they become into an idea it's like a pond is settling and you can see an idea clearly or <laughs> like it's it's, it's like you know yeah oh. yeah it feels like it's crystallizing in this yeah. mellow way if it makes sense when yeah. you said frantic i got that picture of charlie from always sunny with like the the stuff scribbled all over the wall behind him <laughs> <laughs> that's but, funny uh, yeah. yeah no yeah. i think that's accurate very accurate there's this sort of like uh yeah i guess it's like newton's laws of motion but also there's like this feedback loop where it's like the it's like this kind of it's like self self propulsion right the the idea generation is is kind of amping you up more and more um so yeah I would, I would yeah. Agree with that. Yeah. It's almost like for NJs, like 
the more and more they get into an idea, the more the idea is like grounded in their mind. Whereas like for the NP, it's it's almost like a launching pad. Like they go like 10 times, 10 times, 10 speed, the more ideas that they, they loop onto. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like um, a drug. Ideas are like drugs to the any user. Mm -hmm. Whereas, but it's, it's it, I mean, it feels it feels great to to think about ideas too as an NJ, but it's almost like we reach a, a settling point with it. It's exactly. like if you look at Teal Swan or you look at like Matthew Hussey, these are people who I think are NI users. The more and more like they they understand an idea, the more they they like they feel like they're centering themselves in that idea. Right. Whereas the NP doesn't feel like they're centering themselves in an idea. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. No. You know, it kind of reminds me uh, when when NE gets going. It kind of reminds me of when TE gets going. Mm. Kind of gets really excited and obviously it's an extroverted function so it wants to talk interact bounce off things and interesting yeah yeah all all extroverted functions i guess have a really nice momentum with the external world mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so i want to ask you nps about like so i i talked about how njs like to center around an idea how do you guys feel like about the word like centering yourself in an idea or does that make sense? Like, what are you, what is your experience with ideas? Like, yeah, I run circles around them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I think um, I think that when I get centered is if I've settled on like some when I've um, done something that is authentic to myself. That's when I feel centered. So like when I'm when I like let's say like I've um, um, I accomplish a task or like I do a job or get hired at a place to work and and it's like in total alignment with my values. That's when I feel centered. Um, so it's I feel centered in values, not ideas. Um, I will like I said, the only time I feel like centered, um, and I don't even like. I don't even know if I'd use the word centered, but um, settled it would I in an idea is like I said, if my SI then kind of crystallizes it into a theory um, and I'm like, oh, okay, you know, like I, I, I have it now, like I get it and I understand. Um, but it, it's more of like, but it, see, it's tied to the NE where it's like more of an excitement of like, oh, I have it, you know, like I've, you know, <laughs> I've like, I've like whittled away at all the edges and now it's this like, it's, um, um, what is, gosh, what is the word that Michael, Michael Pierce uses? Um, it was, it was so good. Um, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it, it embodies like the essence or perfection of like kind of what you, what you're kind of the whittling away process. Right. But it's more of an excitement than a feeling of centering because like, it's not necessarily like part of me, even though like I put in the effort, but it doesn't feel as part of me as like my values do. I'm kind of struggling to think of how it might feel if I was like centered on an idea. I I guess to me, I, I have like epiphanies sort of, or you might consider maybe something less than an epiphany, like a low grade epiphany, <laughs> which is like being centered on an idea. Um, but then after that happens, it's like, it's already assimilated and I, I quickly right. forget about it. And so it doesn't, like I, I can't remember what it was like not to know the truth anymore. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's it. And um, a lot of the time, I really only feel centered when I am totally not attached to like anything. When I, when I feel just like just total Zen state. <laughs> what you describe, uh, Joyce, for me, it kind of feels like like a body of water, an ocean, uh, you know, or a lake or something, a very still deep body of water where you just feel so, it's very, like you said, grounding, but there's like a weight to it, but in a good way, it's not, it's just a peaceful, calm, grounding feeling. Mm. I, but I think of like a body of water sort of, I guess, because of the weight of that and the darkness and the depth to it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking for a floating feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I, that's why I think for me, 
it is like it's a settled not a like a centered for the ideas what i'm saying an, an idea feels centered what i mean in 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 the way that i experience it is like uh, it's like when you've tied all loose ends to an idea like and you you fully understood it i don't it's really ambiguous oh. and vague no that doesn't happen like, for like me it's complete like it's complete complete yeah a complete idea yeah no, it's like yeah it's like a thoroughness like ni is incredibly thorough with its exploration and if it pursues an idea it's committed yeah like no. a baby no. and you know <laughs> like, when you've done you know that feeling of okay it's complete and it's perfect you just have that i don't even know how you know it just you know yeah and it's it's not tied to si it's like it, it exists it's complete because like you've you've ideationally covered all all bases and you know yeah <laughs> I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't... If that makes any sense. <laughs> it's very <I> think... abstract. <laughs> I always leave a loose end. Oh no. <laughs> that would drive me insane. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. yeah I, I don't have, <laughs> nothing is set in stone like that. Um, not, I don't, yeah, there's nothing that I can really let myself like fully believe really to the point where I don't have any doubts about it. Like I always know that I could be wrong. It's like I need closure. Yeah, that's different because that's an idea outside of yourself. These are ideas that we've constructed. So there's a way that we kind of know, well, I should speak for myself. Like if you've constructed something, it can't be wrong. I mean, it can be wrong in some ways, but there's a point at which it just needs to fulfill itself. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. totally. I guess if you guys want to be settled, grounded, I think, the right place for us to be is probably like a lazy river, like slowly drifting. All the time. <laughs> like, yeah. don't want to get too frantic about it, but <laughs> right, right. And you know, there's always, for me at least, there's always a willingness to disrupt things if it's for the cause. Like, there's all I, I never want to like push things away that could improve my structure or my idea or whatever it is or my plans mm. yeah. so it's not that it's not a resistance to that it's just i feel like we do so much research that you just get to the point well this is what happens to me i do so much research i i actually will not stop researching until i start covering everything over and over encountering everything over and over and over again so i'm like okay mm. i'm not seeing anything new here this is the scope of it now i'm going to start working with what i've got and mm. That, yeah i mean like i i that's not i don't know if that's like natural for me i had to in in undergrad i had to be trained to do that like um like my professor would say like once you start um seeing the same um uh sources cited over and over again then you know you've reached kind of like the end of like the available information about that subject so so um, I do, I did that because like, or I do that because it was, it was a learned thing. I don't naturally do that. That's interesting. Oh, that's cool that they teach that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, we were, it was for, it does. No, it does. And it, and it was for a research paper. It was for my senior thesis class. And so it was structured how you would do research as like an academic, like what they do. So um, yeah. Well, and actually, I went to graduate school and I got a master's mm -hmm. in science, and that's where I started to figure that out. Mm -hmm. and, and now I just apply it to everything because, you know, once you find something that works, you stick with it typically. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. It works for anything. Mm -hmm. If I'm interested enough in something like with typology, I scoured the internet. I, I read every single page. I watched every single video that, that seemed to be a remotely decent source for anything. I got to the point where I was reading like half translated Russian socionics pages. You know, <laughs> oh, wow. It was just like, so I totally get that to the point where like, it's all exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's the five in all our Enneagram types. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe. Like Stacey has it in his tri-type. I have it as my wing and Holly has it as her main type. So we're all just information yep. hungry people <laughs> i think we are yeah i have it my wing and in my tri-type so mm -hmm. yeah yeah and we love typology so yeah. we're hungry about that <laughs> <laughs> and so 
what ifs let's let's talk about what ifs <laughs> no boy <laughs> we could be on that for a long time <laughs> <laughs> what is everyone's experience with what ifs i mean that's that it any is what if <laughs> like <laughs> yeah there's not We're like, all about uh, it yeah. yeah there's not much to say and just that yeah it's just like that's just our life philosophy what if you know <laughs> like it just it, it's how our, how we orient ourselves it's it's towards everything it's it's just a, just constantly there in the background what if what if what if like what even, if or what about right right <laughs> oh my god <laughs> or um yeah no exactly um it's even when we think we've like kind of settled on things we actually really haven't settled because there's like space you were saying earlier there's always in the back of your mind like the what if you know? yeah well first i was gonna say i don't encounter that too much but that's a lie i do um when it comes like for example at work i'm constantly thinking well like if i'm working on a project i'm thinking okay well if we do this then that's gonna be the outcome or this could be the outcome or that you know i'm always looking at the potentialities and then how to deal with those. So I guess that's sort of a what if. No, you're already, no, you said, you said this will. No, I'm saying <laughs> what if this happens or what if that happens? Like plan, like if this happens, what would I do? If that happens, what would we do? All right. You, mean, you made it. What this? Like what, if, like for example, I'll give you an example. Okay. I'm working on a project. I work at a county uh, in the IT department. And uh, we worked on a project with, Doing mental health screening, I developed a form where inmates, as they're brought in, they have to go through the screening to see them, you know, make sure they're okay. Um, and you have to think about when you're implementing this project, are the nurses going to be able to, when they're sitting there with the inmate, is this form going to be something that, that works for them? Or are they going to need something that's, I, I can't actually think of a specific example, but right. you have to think about what are the different scenarios that they, that customer might encounter when right. they're doing this so that you can anticipate all of the problems that might come up and then head them off at the pass. Yeah. Mm. So that's mm. how it works for me. Yeah. That's a good example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is you, about anticipating potential problems and mm. trying to prevent them. Yeah. My, my, what if is anticipation too. Mm. <laughs> So it's anticipating an SE thing, basically, is what Holly's talking about. Mm -hmm. It's also some sick stuff because she talks about like contingency planning. If if this, mm. then this. If, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely mm -hmm. see that too. Yeah. Also, it's also not just SE, but also I guess FE, because I'm very customer service oriented. So I'm very concerned with the experience. Well, okay, that's SE. The experience they're gonna have. Mm trying to do their job are they going to be able to is what we're doing making it harder or easier in every way yeah and, and it's also te because it, it's very orderly logically logistically orderly in the real world mm -hmm. <laughs> systematic very yeah much. systematic <laughs> very, much. And, and so, very much so and so now i'm wondering um how we can separate the types further so like how do you tell apart an NF from an NT in this in this circle? I was just gonna, I think there might be maybe with the NFs there might be a more people orientation towards um, um, towards what we do as opposed to like an object um, or a detached orientation to maybe what the NTs might do like maybe that's their preference um, like or that that's our respective preferences right so like um, our our actions will be oriented in a different way yeah i would just i could just <clears throat> sense that t coming out versus uh, to me it's a feeling it's hard to put it in words but i can just feel the f from people yeah when you guys are speaking like you're you're like way more emotive and there's like more warmth coming out of it and it, there's just a whole yeah for for us it's a lot more like dead pan yeah kind of chubby, yeah dabby and like more, more rough around the edges, probably a little bit. Right. Mm, yeah, I could see that. I think, yeah, I think there's, it, it's more of like a, maybe not a, something like specific or concrete that you can like point out, but it, it seems to be more of a vibe between the NFs 
versus the NTs. And I think that just goes with like Kiersey's like the, uh, the concept of a temperament. Like you can yeah. intuit like a, the temperament from us because of the vibe we give off. Um, same with the NTs. So then, feelers are more like emotionally fuzzy. Is that what you guys are sensing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're kind of oh, like yeah. harder, you know, more harder. I mean, I we can be warm. I feel like INTJs are pretty warm. So. Yeah. We, but when we get into our TE mode, we're not warm. Right. <laughs> it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty like an on-off thing. Yes, very, very yeah. on-off. I guess I would say that you maybe Joyce and Christian, like, they go into like, they're much more descriptive, I guess, maybe, maybe anticipating people being able to understand them. Mm, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. It goes back to what Christian was saying, the people orientation for the feelers. Like it's like the primary orientation, like people is like the biggest component. Mm -hmm. Whereas like for thinkers, people are a big component for thinkers, but it's one of the many metrics mm -hmm. for thinkers. So that shows through their vibe because feelers, you'll, you'll feel that people centeredness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And didn't Dave superpowers and Shan talk about, you can kind of tell because you'll have, I may be off on this, but they're talking about, yeah, I think I'm off, but I'll just throw it out there. You know how you have your deciders and your, observers and you have like observer freakouts versus decider freakouts where in uh, feelers will be more likely, or I guess it'd be dominant feelers actually more likely and dominant judges in general, more likely to be very focused on the tribe versus yeah, that's a different topic. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> I just went off on a tangent. Sorry. It's okay. I mean, oh, that's a, that what that reminds me of is I'm so sorry guys, if I'm hogging the conversation, um, it's your channel, you're good. No. <laughs> <laughs> So like what I noticed about like NJs and NPs, like the differences too, is that NPs, when they're making like connections, it's actually about the thing at hand. So you're you're actually talking about the thing at hand. Like when Spacey's talking about the screws on the floor, like he's directly re replying to the conversation that we're talking about. What I noticed about NJs, sometimes NJs are replying to the idea in their mind. So like, well, like sometimes Holly throughout the conversation, like I, and, and with me too, I'm guilty of this. It's like, I'm, 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 I'm replying, but sometimes I'm replying to further an idea I'm already thinking about. So it's like the any users will actually interact with the idea as it's there. And I know this is really conceptual, but like the NJs will kind of like want to expand on an idea they're already working on. So they'll, they'll bring it into the conversation, but it's almost like it can be irrelevant because they're kind of building on an idea that's relevant to them, but not irrelevant, but irrelevant to the external world. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, no, I think, I, I, I think we had this conversation um, after our recording of the video that we, the other one we did where we were talking about parables that, that, um, NJs tend to use parables more to like explain an idea. So it's, it's not like the specific details of the parable that are relevant to maybe what, what they're trying to convey. It's more like the overall idea or the lesson to be derived from that. Whereas like we would not, I don't speak in parables. Like I'm, when I'm talking about something, I'm actually directly relating it to whatever is being discussed. So it's not, it's not like some like circuitous or roundabout way of getting at what's being discussed i'm like directly addressing it yeah that's a very good good um example and joyce i think what i was just doing is is an example of that which is probably what made you think of it it's, yeah it's but it's not so it's maybe it is that i was trying to think of something i was already thinking of but i really wasn't thinking of it until that split second i think for me at least in that moment what it was was my brain sort of like connected two concepts on one level but they weren't really that close. So I couldn't really articulate them and I didn't want to take up time trying to do it. So I just dropped it. Okay. But if I had some time, I could find the connection there. But so that sounds very NI too, like That's not right. having the words, like when it's still in the conceptual phase and trying to like get down to narrow it down. Yeah, that's well, interesting. Guy. 
Joyce, I think what you were explaining, it, it sounds like, I, I mean, I, I see what you're doing. I know what you're talking about. Like you have a larger context that everything has to fit into. And for us, the context doesn't really matter. Like it's just whatever's happening right now. Mm, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I is trying to fit everything into its idea structure. So it's like, okay, I need this idea that we're talking about in the present to relate back to a larger yeah. context. Whereas yeah. the user can play with the idea in the moment without needing to attach it to like another thing, if that makes sense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So right. yeah. Very, very true. Well, it's like it will, I need to attach every idea to a purpose. Every it's idea more like will... it'll inevitably be attached to a bunch of different other things. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, right. don't to, we don't have to do it. Yeah. Right. But like our our structure, that at least for me, it's such a all encompassing structure that you yeah. can put a lot in there and find yeah. the connections. Well, you guys have like a super structure. It's yeah. right. We it's have a, like a yeah. You you guys have a meta structure, right? Like a structure overarching all structures. Ours is like all on the same plane. Like right. There's no hierarchy. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 Awesome discussion, everyone. Any questions you want to bring up with, or any more points you guys would like to discuss with each other? Um, I think um, I, I guess our relationships to each type. Um, for me, you know, if, if, if others want to chime in, um, their experiences. Um, I, I have a, a interesting relationship with, um, in particular. INTPs and INTJs, um, but um, I think with the um, um, with NJs, I think um, I think really with everybody um, with and with both INJs and other INPs, like I think we're abstract in our own way, and so we can like we enjoy like the philosophical discussion. Um, I think in particular, I can connect with INTJs and I've noticed that there seems to be a camaraderie between INTJs and INFPs. Um, yes. There's, there's something like, like I had an INTJ coworker and like we just immediately clicked and we became friends. Um, and so I don't know, there's something about INTJs that um, I, as an INFP, I find fascinating. I think obviously we can relate on the FITE axis, but, um, but the, the NI, um, in particular is also really, really interesting because I'm interested in abstract, um, especially like language and linguistics and, you know, and, and um, shifting paradigms and all that other stuff that kind of like related to NI. Um, so there's, there's, uh, um, there's like comforts in different ways, like with INTJs, with INTPs, like I feel um, uh, sort of a kindred spirit in the sense that like, even though like we have different, um, um, the dominant functions, but they're still JI and they're still like philosophically similar in many respects. I think Jung even said that like TI and JI are, or TI and FI are like just are two sides of the same coin. Um, and so, and then I think that the NESI in the middle, like there's like a really big connection there. So um, there is definitely like a facility that I have in relationships with INTPs um, where we we kind of like geek out like my cousins and INTP and we're like huge huge Apple fanboys so <laughs> like we like it's a thing for us that like you know we'll watch all of you know like next week Apple has a, an event where they're gonna announce something and you know we we're talking about watching it together and, we're pl and, and like we, we'll just geek out and nerd out we'll like we just th there it's just there's a fun NE excitement to that that kind of stuff that I don't get to do with very many people. So like, it's it's fun when you connect on that level with INTPs and I find that I do that very easily. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta reiterate the whole INTJ, INFP thing. It, I've, I've tried to think it, about what it is and I, I mean, I've got ideas about it, but it's it's real interesting. There's definitely connection. What are, what are your ideas? I wanna hear them. Well, I think that, <laughs> well obviously it's the, the TE, um, um, FI. FI access. Sorry, I got to fly over here. The, um, that access. But so, you know, because they, you know, they say you're inferior function, you're going to be attracted to people who exhibit that. And so mm -hmm. that would be one of the, the issues there or the, 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 the reasons. Um, and then also, I feel like it's the 
the intuition. I feel like I've I personally really benefit from their NE because mm. they've got it in the second slot. Y'all have it in your second slot, so right. that makes it. My understanding, if this is correct, is that it's your you have that as a, your creative function, so you can do both NI and NE. Mm -hmm. Obviously, mm -hmm. mostly NE, but. So you can kind of relate to my NI, but you can also help me expand. You can expand mm. it. And, and so there's that collaboration, sort of mental collaboration there. Mm -hmm. and mutual respect. But that's probably the main, but I feel like there's more to it than that. Yeah. There's, I just more, there's something spiritual. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I think so. It's just hard to put your finger on it. Do you, do you have any theories about what it could be? The same principle that gets like INTJs and INFPs together, gets INFJs and INTPs together. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. There's like AJ Drenth is an INTP and his, his wife is an INFJ. And I see this coupling very often. Yeah, they call it like, the golden pair or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although I've, I've seen cases where it actually does not work out. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Very disastrous, but it depends. But yeah. Yeah, but for some reason, they like they- There's they an attraction. Together. Yeah, yeah. There's an attraction. Yeah. Mm. I was thinking it probably really does come down to the fact that like like for example, like INFJ has like the FE that we want, but it's not like overbearing. Right. Right. And yeah. then we both have 4D and I. Um, you know, we share the same judging functions. So it's like just really easy to relate on an intellectual level. Like yeah, and I find that sometimes people admire their third function. So, like for the mm. INFJ, it's TI. Yeah. So when I see someone using TI, well, it's like pretty right. cool. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think all four of this these types together, like having the first two letters the same, it seems to result in some pretty fruitful discussion. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Seems like a good group. It's yeah, I totally yeah. agree. The most yeah. the people I've been closest to in my life. Well, my mom was an INFJ, and I, my first girlfriend was INFJ, and INFPs. I've been married to one, and then I had another long-term relationship with the INFP, and then, yeah. So there's lots of that, and then best friend ENFPs, a couple of those, and then my dad's ENTJ, so that's he's more like he's more like me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that parent, that INs are really good together. It seems like. I think so. They are. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, there's a, an appreciation and respect for each other. Yeah. And it's also, we, it's like, we kind of like, it's, I kind of feel like this sometimes it's, we have something that we can't get anywhere else. I mean, mm. in this world, it's, it's hard to find other people like us. Yeah. And, 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 and it, actually too, it's so interesting. Like just having done the IP video yesterday, the contrast in vibe. Yeah. And it's just, it's very, it's different. Like, 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 I don't know, like I still vibe with like ISPs, but there's, but there's like with the INs, there's like a very deep understanding somehow. Like it's, it's very metaphysical, mystical and abstract. Yeah, well, we're more on the same level here for sure. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah it's a definitely a different feeling. Like it, it feels like, um, like I feel like, like once you communicate as, as IPs, like you can get there, but like, um, I feel like there's just the IN and there's a, an immediate kind of understanding. Like it's, it's a different, it's definitely a different vibe. Yeah. If it, it does feel like kind of up here more, you know, mm -hmm. not it's in like a the, better way, but just in an abstract, uh, I guess. It's really way. heady. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. It's like the meeting of aliens, a aliens <laughs> coming together. <laughs> yes. Yes. I love that. I love that idea. Was, like my mom is an INFJ. And so when I was young, we, we used to have some great conversations, but I remember one conversation we had one time where I was like, mom, I wish I could just be a, a, a head and not have a body or something like that. I mean, he's the one, that, one of us said that and the other one was like, yeah. And we were just going off onto this. We could just have like, our mind could like project our thoughts and we, we were just all into our head. And I was like sixth grade, but wow. it was really fun to think about that. But anyway, that's cool. Conversations. <laughs> It's it's like we can entertain ideas together. We don't have to translate our ideas with each other. Like we just get each other when we explain yes. an idea. There's that instant communication. It's like we can yeah. speak our IN language together. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like like even like Joyce earlier in the conversation, like, oh, I know I'm being abstract. And I was like, I have no problem understanding yeah, what you're like saying. Like, like I totally understand everything you're saying. 
Yeah. Where like in the IP panel yesterday, I noticed like, can you, it was a lot of like, can you rephrase that um, type of thing? Or I just, I didn't have, I didn't have that problem at all. That is funny because Joyce would be like, this is really abstract. And I'm like, <laughs> wait, isn't this just normal abstract? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's her Etsy coming out. She's trying to make sure everyone. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. right. <laughs> We, we get each other's abstract nature. We feel less weird when we're all weird together. We're just all floating heads together. <laughs> Literally, yeah. We're just ideas, like a vessel for ideas. Yeah. <laughs> I am not weird. I have officially graduated to cool. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so speak for yourself. <laughs> uh. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you NPs are very quick witted, and you guys come up with really cool jokes. So I agree. That was and not cool a joke. references. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Like, is is any like the funny function? Because yeah, basically. A lot. Yeah, okay. I yeah. It's just because like we because of our ability to like take two totally seemingly or ostensibly random ideas and put them together like it can result in really silly ideas and so yeah. that are just absurd and so it just the absurdity is funny you know <laughs> like yeah. especially when it's in your head like i think i think you'll probably see more nps kind of like silently giggling to themselves yes, and you're definitely. like what the you're like what and it's like that's when you know like an any has like had like a really silly idea pop into their head they're like <laughs> thought of a silly possibility and they're like uh, that, that'd be funny well, I work with ISTJ, and he can be really funny too. He's they're got they're deceptively in. funny. Yeah, yeah. You would not. I mean, it's like, whoa, where'd that come from? <laughs> well, low stack NE can be like really goofy. Yeah, Sometimes. they get so yeah. like my dad as an ISTJ, like just when he gets in his goo, it's like, oh my god, dad, you're such a goober. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's so funny. It's it's yeah. very it's very endearing, you know. Yes, because it's almost childlike. Or it is. It is like trying, but they're not trying. It just I don't know it what just, it is. It just is. Yeah, yeah. It's very childlike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. There's a youthful, childlike quality to NE. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It's invigorating, and sometimes with NI doms, like with some NI doms, there's a a pessimism or a realism. So they're like, they're like the old men. <laughs> <You know, like, laughs> There's a cynicism. Yeah. <laughs> Why, like, isn't like the NI and isn't that one of the most like harshest functions or, or TE and FI, like those are all sort of like serious function, intense functions, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I would say so. Like the more intense. I don't know if I, I've never really perceived NI as like inherently intense. Or maybe I'm thinking T-I, um, T-E and F-I, -E, F T-E and F-I. Those are both pretty intense. Yeah, does that mean as a pair? Because yeah. I've yeah, always been used it being my whole life constantly too intense and too serious. So yeah, I've, I've had the same accusation. Like uh, somebody literally told me <laughs> and it like really made me like self-conscious. They're like, you're at a 10, you need to bring it down to like a seven. And I was like, I was so, yeah, it was, and it was an ISTJ who told that to me. So, oh. <laughs> like, so I was like, I was so, um, I became like extremely self-conscious around this person after that. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's more, I guess driven is the word that I would use. Mm -hmm. mm, you know? Right, right. The, the, the FI, it's like the TE wants to like actualize the FI ideals i suppose and, and it's also kind of blunt yes yes like i'm not i'm not normally that way but like especially like engage my te or like get me in a grip state and yeah then that what's will... fe yeah like for the intp and infj i don't know it doesn't it's accommodating i don't know like it's just yeah. like there's a lot of smoothing over right yeah, <laughs> like it's not intense. <laughs> it's yeah, that's it's, that's why it's not perceived as intense is because right. It's all about equalizing everything. Mm -hmm. Right. I agree. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I I think it's, an I could be intense in the sense of its focus. It's like really there's an intensity of focus in a future vision type thing. So I could see that in 
that way being intense. I guess what I would say is like when I saw my INFJ younger brother like growing up, like kind of seeing an eye in a vacuum when that was like kind of all he had going on. <laughs> he was like he barely spoke. He was just he was just like a potato. <laughs> <laughs> and every now and then he'd say something like really off the wall, you know, or like hilarious. Um but it wasn't until he got into like high school where all of a sudden like his FE turned on and all of a sudden he's like cool guy and he's a musician and he's got friends and it's like, oh, okay, you know? That's hilarious. But <laughs> he was super chill, like all the time, not intense, like at all. It's kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. To me, a lot of INFJs are like very placid and mm. like, a, like, a, like a cool mist, like Eric and I always used to say. <laughs> yeah 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 i that, that was um so so spacey and eric, eric actually typed me like a long while back and when you guys were typing me you're like yeah you're like a cool mist and i'm like oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think i think it's like maybe for ni like it's internally very intense but it but unless like right extra Unless yeah. JE projects out that intensity, it's it's not. It's it intense when it's paired with FI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, like it lasers in on the the yeah. feeling, right? Like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So definitely, like the the quadra of um, NTJs and SFPs. Yeah, it could be it could be intense. Interesting. Cool. Any thoughts before we end the panel? <laughs> No, not not cool. Okay, my mind. <laughs> this was fantastic. I I really liked hanging out with all of you guys. It felt like mm -hmm. I was returning back to home. Like I felt like I didn't have to translate my abstractions to you guys. You guys just get me, <laughs> and I feel understood and seen and heard on a different level. <laughs> Thank you, Holly, for coming out uh, and being the 9TJ that I share long-term visions with. You know, there's this camaraderie where we we get each other in the terms that like we always want to like like tie up loose ends, <laughs> and we're we're you know we're we're we were a team on this panel, and I feel a sense of rapport with you from that. And no, I was I, with all of you. I feel a sense of rapport with all of you. <laughs> <laughs> but um holly like i i love just the 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 care for the environment you have and the serious your seriousness and intenseness helps you care for causes and it helps you progress things that matter and mm -hmm. to to care for the long-term future of things oh. and i really really appreciate that about you holly thank you and yeah <laughs> and and so spacey you are like heckishly quick-witted. Like whenever someone says something, you come back with a quick-witted comment and it catches everyone off off guard in the best way possible. Mm. And it's it's humorous, it's funny, and it's it's cool, like what you, you called yourself. <laughs> I I like the the imagery you give us, like of the screws and <laughs> just throwing your ideas on the floor like they're a bunch of screws. It had a lot of shock value and it, it really was funny and and a great way of putting it. So you just have this amazing way of putting things. And I I appreciate you, Stacey, as an INTP who who wields TI so well. Like my my TI child is looking at your TI hero in awe because <laughs> it's like wow spacey calls out bs when he sees it you might be a chill dude but you have a sharp wit and your sharp mind makes for a very interesting and intellectual discussion and so i always feel like whenever i invite you on the panel is always filled with these amazing insightful well well thought like these well executed ideas because your ti is able to cut to the truth of ideas and whenever something is less than truthful you're able to course correct us so it's more truthful so thank you for for your ti it is a gift from it's a, it's a gift to this panel and it's a gift to whoever is in your immediate vicinity <laughs> and so yeah <laughs> oh thank you so much joyce you're a doll <laughs> <laughs> and yeah um i appreciate you 
And yeah, and Christian, I, I like how you're very idealistic. You dream up these like fantasy ways of of, of life. And I, I love that. That brings like imagination to life. You know, it brings imagination to life. And mm -hmm. we always need that. And I like how like when you tag team with Spacey, it becomes this like highly intellectual duo when I, where it's like a, a team to be messed with. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, wow. yeah, yeah. So you, you, you have a lot of intellectual horsepower and I, I really appreciate that in conjunction mm -hmm. with Spacey. It just yeah. becomes like this very, very smart, smart panel. <laughs> and I really <laughs> appreciate that. And, and Christian, so I really like how you, you have this softness to you. I don't know, like you feel like a teddy bear and a human being. Oh, like, thank you. Like when, when you talk, there's this certain type of softness to you. Like I feel like safe around that type of softness that you have because it, it feels like you're you're it's safe to be vulnerable around you and you create that atmosphere where people can open up and share their authentic selves with you oh, and thank so you. you do a great job with that yeah that means a yeah. lot i i tried i try to create environments where people feel safe to to be vulnerable so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. glad that comes across That's we've got, we've got a lot of good representatives here today i think i'm glad mm -hmm. ollie was here what yes you? yes yeah. so nice meeting you yeah, nice to meet you too, Christian. <laughs> I mean, I already know Spacey and Joyce. <laughs> right. Thank yeah. you for inviting me. It was, uh, it's really fun. Yeah. Totally. The ion types tend to be one of my favorites because I feel like we get to share this inner world together or this inner head life. Like it, it's our abstract ideas and we can keep going back and forth without needing to slow down for anyone. Mm -hmm. So it feels really, really fulfilling to talk with you guys. <laughs> same yeah yeah and so thank you everyone for tuning in you're fantastic for watching this far and i'll see you guys in the next episode bye everyone bye bye, <laughs> bye. bye.